My audience fell asleep. Oh man. Hey, welcome to Gluten Free and Me. We have been away for a hot minute, but we're back. It has been years. We've moved, the kids have grown up. I mean, two out of three have graduated college, but we're still eating and we're still gluten free because we still have celiac disease. So we have a love of food. We have a love for baking. Doesn't necessarily mean we're great bakers, but we love carbs and we love to eat. So we've developed a lot of these different recipes that we've seen online or someone has suggested or we bought in a store and we tweak them a little bit. My middle daughter found a recipe for hamburger buns, and we've been doing buns for the last 17 years a certain way with our bread recipe. But today we're gonna show you this hamburger recipe that she found, and we're going to use the all-purpose flour that they suggested. I love Vitacost. I don't know if anybody's ever used Vitacost on there. Here we are, Vitacost. Place an order, you get 10% off, free shipping for $49, and I get a lot of um, flowers there. And I tried, this is the first time we're trying this, so this is their all-purpose flour. So we have measured out three and a quarter cup of their all-purpose flour. And my stand-up mixer, you guys, okay? Which is old and noisy, so I'll shut that part off for you. Okay, this already has xanthan gum in it. If you're making your own mixture, you have to add xanthan gum. I know a lot of you cannot find yeast in the grocery store. It's a thing, don't freak out. If you have, I believe it's baking soda and lemon, you can create your own alternative to yeast. And also, I wanted to show you this brick. Do not be afraid to purchase this. We used to use this when we owned the deli. So don't be afraid to purchase something like this. Store it nice and sealed when you're not using it. It's your active yeast. So active yeast, we have one tablespoon of active yeast. Add that right in. And this recipe, I've never done this before, adding something right into a recipe as opposed to making the yeast stand and grow. So now we have our cream of tartar, and that is a quarter of a teaspoon, such a negligible tiny little amount. Also, baking soda. I went to three grocery stores this morning looking for more baking soda and baking powder, a hard thing to find. But you have to go into the alternative aisle. So go down your regular baking aisle when you're grocery shopping. You know, right now in the, the with the virus, COVID, a lot of people are home baking. So these things that are regular staples for gluten eaters and gluten-free eaters alike, uh, we need them in our recipes. So go down each of the aisles, go down the baking aisle, but go down the alternative aisle, go down the flour aisle where they might have it sectioned off gluten-free and you'll find, and I found a lot today when I was not in the baking aisle. Our baking soda is a quarter of a teaspoon. Get every little bit of that, bang that out. We have um, one teaspoon of your Him Himalayan salt, okay? And it does ask for kosher salt, so I think equal to kosher salt in, you know, saltiness, a Himalayan salt is perfect. We have uh, one tablespoon of brown sugar. I have not found that sugar has been missing from the grocery store. And one thing I was really surprised by with this in the dry ingredient section is buttermilk. I hope that if you don't have this, I hope that you um, can find this in your grocery store. It's a staple in our house. Uh, the very first time I bought it, I didn't realize that you had to refrigerate it, so that went in the garbage, but refrigerate it. Open it and refrigerate it and follow the instructions, whatever you need to have it as a liquid and it has it right on there. But today's recipe asks for a half a cup of buttermilk. Okay, guys, if any of you are out there that are not bakers like me, because I'm not, I, I'm a cook, I love to cook, I love it, but baking is kind of like a science. So, do that tap thing, you've seen it on TV, you've watched them in the cooking shows, and then scrape across, that'll give you your exact amount. My daughters are forever telling me, Mom, you did not measure that correctly. So, in baking, that matters. <laughs> tap your container, get all of your buttermilk out. These are our dry ingredients right now, and now we'll move on to the wet ingredients. All right. So in the recipe that we followed, it tells you to hold off on the salt and then mix it again with the salt. And I don't, I don't find a reason for that. I, I'm, I'm very much a, let's just kind of throw it together, feed the family. I don't have all that time. This recipe also has very many rises. Let it rise. We let the, the rolls rise for a shorter amount of time. So I hope this works for you, but it's been working for us. So our wet ingredients, which we would consider is our two tablespoons of 
room temperature butter and we used unsalted today. Hey guys, always remember to, I'm trying to use utensils as much as possible. We are home in our own kitchen, but I do wash my hands in between everything and just be cognizant of that. Just, you know, wash your hands in between everything. Um, as I did for this one egg white that we have here, egg whites, you can buy it in a container. I like to use egg whites for breakfast, so I kind of always have egg white container, but I did use one egg white. And I know cooking, uh, cleaning supplies are hard to find too, but when you clean your surfaces, just try to use some soapy water and then rinse it down um, with regular water before your surface, before you um, start baking, because we don't want any soap or anything like that in our food. All right, and now apple cider vinegar. I take the giant jug from Sam's Club, y'all, and get these little tiny, glass jars. Make sure you shake it so you get all the goodness of um, the apple cider vinegar. And we um, are going to use one teaspoon for that. All right. I know everybody asks me where I got this little ditty. I can't tell you. I bought it 15 years ago, but it's awesome. So one teaspoon right in there. Oh, I have some tricks for you for apple cider vinegar for another video. <gasps> I love apple cider vinegar. Last but not least, what we do need to activate the yeast and, and our, help our sugar and all that along is one and a half cups of warm water. We add that to our mixture. And now I'm gonna show you what it looks like in between and then what it should be looking like at the end. This hamburger recipe, a hamburger bun recipe, she says, it's done when it looks like whipped, like almost like whip, whipped cream or something. So you know how our um, doughs, especially gluten-free doughs, kind of look like, well, dough, pizza dough, kind of congealed. Well, we're gonna put it on high. I wanna show you what we don't want, and then I'm gonna show you what we do want. Okay, guys, so here we have, it's only been a minute on high, all right? That's not looking so whipped to me, but you can see I would have called that dough. Hang tight, we're not there yet. So let's do it for another minute on high. You can see now after a minute, we're getting some air in that. I'm gonna let it go for another half a minute or so, but you can see how it's starting to stick to the sides and it's not clumping like my pizza dough does um, in the middle. And I don't, I don't, I like to use the paddle more than I like to use the dough hook too, so it's just my preference. All right guys, so I have also adopted for the last five or six years, I use parchment paper. Um, you can get them at your big box stores like, you know, Costco or Sam's Club, but that's how I line up everything. I don't like to, I love to use aluminum pans. I don't like to think of us eating aluminum for as much as we eat, because <laughs> we eat a lot. That's my first suggestion to you, some parchment paper. My second suggestion is remove your jewelry. You know, these are little things, I swear. I know you probably are already doing that, but it's just something that I forget sometimes and then I have stuff in my ring and then I have to deal with it. Since we use the all-purpose flour, it, you would think, well, let's just use that to dust with. But I don't want to use any more of the xanthan gum in the recipe, so I would dust it with some rice flour. So in this recipe, this fabulous woman had a lot of kneading process. But she did suggest that we cut this dough in half and then knead each section. But I kneaded the dough as one big group here. And then you can see it start to form and get you know, nice and smooth. Okay. She's had a little extra steps of kneading that I kind of changed up a little bit. Then shit's getting real. Then, oh, that's nice and smooth. And then we cut it in half. Okay, I eyeball it, she waited, I don't weigh things. And then we're gonna make four in each. So, she wanted me to knead this again. Mm -mm. Let's just four this. It's your kitchen, guys. Do whatever you wanna do. That's the beauty, it's your kitchen. And then we're going to still have a little dusting, okay? This is a great um, dough, I'm not sticking or anything like that. And you're gonna knead that little dough. You're gonna knead it a little bit, and then you're gonna do with your palm, rolling it, cage it. I put them on the sheet, following her recipe, exactly like that. And we had fabulous buns from that, but when they rose a little bit, they were no bigger than that size. So today, I'm gonna just make them just a tad bit flatter, so I have a larger circumference. And let's play around, because again, my kitchen, so I'm playing. Take our parchment sheet, 
and we're gonna put these. And now we're gonna let them rise this way. She has us having it rise um, in a greased pan. You can do that, that'd be fun. Nice and soft, They're like little pillows. Okay, so we're gonna let these proof. Now the original recipe calls for a little bit more proofing. You know, knead it as a bit, one big chunk, throw it in a greased pan, a pot, the tight cover and let it rise. Um, I'm going with the concept that I had an idea for buns and I'm crunched on time. So I'm going to let them rise and do a little bit of rising here. There is nothing wrong with letting things rise, follow the recipe. Hundred on your proof, on your oven. If you don't have a proofing um, mechanism on your oven, you can put it in a warm space. Some people like to cover it. Uh, we're just lucky to have this proofing on our oven, so that's what we're gonna do. But when I didn't have it, I would just put it um, near the oven, cover it with some towels, that's what I did. Okay, everything is in there, and we're gonna let that rise in that proofing oven uh, for 45 minutes. All right, so this is our Proofed beauties. And they're gonna go down into my 400 degree oven. You guys are exactly what we wanted. In a 400 degree oven for 18 minutes. All right, guys. So these little duties just came out of the oven. Looking gorgeous. I'll crack one open for you. All right. This is what it looks like. Oh, you can still see the steam coming right off of it. So as you know, you might, oh, it looks nice and fluffy. Right now when things are hot, they look dense, but they're fluffy and they look butter. Oh my God, the first thing that came to my mind is put butter on it. Guys, it came perfect. I am super excited about this. This is what it looks like inside. You can still see the steam. Oh my gosh, it's gorgeous and it tastes delicious and I've tasted it and so have my husband. So my husband, a gluten eater, gave it, oh, and a bread man, by the way, too, gave my buns a thumbs up.